Hello, my name is Jay. Welcome back to my Tech Vault. And today we're going to be unboxing and building a system in and reviewing the Talios M1 uh, case from Gamitas. Now, a couple things I want to point out before we get into this video. Number one, there's a few exciting features I'm actually interested to see. First off, side mounting graphics cards. Something I think should be done a little bit more. It allows the graphics card to be seen more. But of course, then you have that drawback of airflow. So I'm a little concerned and interested to see how this plays out. Also, this only has two RGB fans, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, two fans inside the whole entire case is maybe problematic and you may need to buy more. Uh, but besides that, I'm interested to see how it looks, how it goes, and of course we're going to be building a system in it. Uh, my brother's actually going to be getting this case. He's really excited about it. So, uh, yeah, but that's what we're going to do. I like to, of course, build a system because it's really good for reviewing because a lot of... You can, you can unbox a case, you can do a lot of stuff, talk about it, but until you really build a system in it, you can really tell how easy it is to build in. And, you know, we've had some really easy to build in cases come through here recently, so I'm interested to see how this one plays out as well. So let's unbox this sucker. Okay, so now I'm going to grab myself my pocket knife. Uh, well, not really pocket knife, my box opener. And uh, cut into the sucker. Uh, handle broke off, actually, surprisingly. One of the handles broke off, but I think that's just packaging. It's like they tried to even tape that back up box is actually kind of beat up, but I think we'll be fine with the case. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Okay. Right off the first thing we see, the front of the case. Let's see if I can get this out real quick. Okay. So let's just get a real quick close up on this sucker. So right off the bat, we have ourselves a nice little gap in between here. Um, actually, I was a little concerned about airflow because in the front of the box, it actually looked like there was... Um, not really any gap here, but with the front panel looks pretty good. Uh, as I said, though, another RGB fan may end up being needed. Let's see if we can get on the side real quick. So yeah, the side panel is actually somewhat good. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the tinted uh, side panels, though. Uh, I really think that that kind of takes away from the inside of the case. I like them pretty clear, but that's just my preference. Let's take a look in this back real quick. So the back, as we can see, has the ability to side mount your graphics card, what we're all here for. Uh, they've also left these out. That's also kind of a disappointment. I mean, these are not really expensive, so they've left these out. And if you're just side mounting your graphics card, then obviously you don't need those. And I think these are metal as well, so that you can't put them back in once you break them out. And then, of course, you've got the inside of the case that we can see in. So I guess now I'd say it's time to build it and see really what that impression does. Oh, the button's actually kind of clicky, like that. Uh, but yeah, let's go through and test it out. So for today's treat, we've got a GTX 1080 Ti and an 8700K 8, Intel system that we're building in. Um, and then over here we've got, I've actually ended up switching this uh, front panel around. I didn't like the fact that the logo was on the top. Uh, I just found that it was off. It, and I, I really think this should actually be the stock configuration because right now, as it was, it was really annoying to, I mean, it took a good bit of time to switch that out. And I think that I understand they want to have their brand recognition, but for real, this needs to be where every other case has it. So let's get building. So uh, we're about this far already into the build, and uh, the case didn't come with any screws whatsoever. No screws, no mounting brackets, no bag of anything. Um, I've literally spent, I mean, the box has a little bit of a hole in it. I don't know if that's where some screws could have slipped out. But there is literally nothing whatsoever anywhere in the case. So, yeah. I gotta say, that looks nice. So, this uh, has been one of the most tedious, longest builds that I've done in a case in a while, especially because most recently I've had some other cases I've built in, and there's a few, few issues that I've had. So, first off, number one, uh, there's, it, it looks like this, the box that it came in had some type of shipping error. So I'm going to give a benefit of the doubt here and the comment section, I'll pin a comment that uh, kind of goes over what ends up being an uh, issue with shipping and what ends up being an actual issue with the case. So we're going to start off with issues that I believe something happened in shipping. 
and therefore the comment section will of course alleviate these. I've already emailed them out. Uh, I am making this video over the weekend though, so therefore I kind of got to make sure I get everything done before the week starts for school and all that stuff. So first off, there were no like screws or uh, I guess standoffs that came in the case. Now I believe there's like a box that might have fallen out, and since screws and standoffs are pretty easy, then pretty common, especially in cases, I'm going to go with the benefit of the doubt and likely almost 98% sure that this will not be something that you will have an issue with. Uh, obviously, I've emailed them. I'm pretty sure I'll get the standoffs or something like that back. No issue there. Also, somewhere along the lines is I think there is an RGB cable that connects that allows you to use the or at least address the fans over here. I think that uh, I don't know how well you guys can see this. But as you can see, the fans look very nice. The front of the case looks very nice. No issue there. Um, I think that probably something happened that was in that box and ability to at least address the fans is kind of lost, so that's something else to keep in mind. As I said though, I will include everything when I hear back from them down in the description. So that, that concludes the list of things that are 98% sure something to do with shipping. Moving on. So this case advertises, especially in some of the pictures, as my brother who's sitting over here was pointing out to me, it advertises three RGB fans in some of them. Uh, obviously, with only two fans in a case in 2019, I do not think that is adequate. So if you're planning on getting this case, plan to order extra fans. The other thing is these fans, especially the RGB ones, have a really odd interface. They're not standard, so therefore you can't just plug these in to a US, or, or I guess a hub. You have to have the special fans that go with the hub that's in the back. So that's another thing to point out is these fans are actually pretty expensive as well. So by only having two and the fan hub being very unique and it looks like almost standard, or not really standard, but um, I guess specific to this brand, I would say there's a little bit of concern there if you wanted to get more fans as well. Next up is the side mounted graphics card. And my brother's sitting over here not too happy because the side mounted graphics card, in reality, uh, the graphics card he has, the 1080 Ti Duke, didn't fit. And obviously with the bigger cooler, that's probably something that is more cooler related. Still though, I think that by looking at the space and how much room they had to work with, I think that it's not something that could have been easily fixed. So I think that just because we had a bigger cooler for the CPU and the graphics card, of course, being rather large, I think there was that was something that was a one-off case. I would say, though, if you're doing like a Founders Edition or a blower style card or something that fits within the standard size, then I definitely would say that it would be something that would definitely be reasonable. Obviously, it didn't come with a little standoff, which I had over here. Um, so you don't have one of these. You'll have to go out and buy these as well. And these are an additional like 15 bucks. So to make this case uh, support its main features, you have to go through and probably invest another 15 bucks to 20 bucks in another case fan. If you want an RGB one, just one, by the way. And then you'd also have to go through and invest probably another 15 bucks into a graphics card mount or uh, extender, I guess. And also to get that side mounted graphics card feature working. So in reality, you're looking at something that's probably going to run you up around right around 115 to 100, well, maybe 110 bucks that you're looking at instead of this MS or instead of this retailing for like 100, what is this, 80 bucks? You said 80 bucks retails for right around 80 bucks. You're gonna to have to sink in an additional 30 bucks to get kind of this full features or all the main advertised features working. So that being said, I think it's definitely a good-looking case. Another thing we also wanted to point out is that on the front, the uh, IO by stock is actually on the bottom. Now, I really do appreciate the fact that they've given us the ability to switch this off. Two things though, that the logo has a static color. It would have been really nice had it gone with the RGB, uh, had it been you know synced as well. The other thing is, I really, really, really think that this should have been, this was reversed by the way. I think the logo should not have been up here, but down here. I think that the IO should have been up here because this is standard, this is industry standard, this is standard across all the cases. So as I was saying earlier, the biggest concern for me is that this is not industry standard, this is put down here. Obviously it's supposed to be close to the ground so you can have access to the cables and they're not really pulling up here. But I think that that would have been a, I would think much more people prefer it up here where it has been on for the last cases or been for the last couple of cases for many, many years. I understand this is the idea behind this. I think that having the ability to switch is great. I think that the problem is though that it's not default or stock like this. Another thing that my brother who's been sitting over here helping me actually build this because this is his computer. Um, another thing we wanted to point out and we're just, this is actually at the, recording this at the end of the video too because he just reminded me. Um, the back has, I would say, 
What would you describe? Inadequate? It, it bulges. Like, you can move the metal in the back of the computer because there's no room. So, so what he's saying is the, uh, the room in between the cables in the back and... Uh, I'm not even opening again to show you guys, so y'all are just gonna have to imagine this one with me. So it was, it was, it took like a good five, ten minutes to get this to fit on here. It's a, uh, it's a bulging a little bit. Um, yeah, this sucker, um, it, it, it's inadequate room in the back, and I definitely can notice that there was, yeah, inadequate room in the back. Please, yeah, yeah. Uh, compared to some of the other cases that I've worked with actually quite recently and done reviews on. Uh, in particular, just name me if you be quiet, all those other companies that have also sent me free cases. This has inadequate room, period. I'm just saying that. That is, I've, I've built with other cases. This Other cases were easy, plenty of room, and lots of other cases. This just has a severe problem with not enough room. And uh, it's, it's pretty tight. Oh yeah, and the fan in the back is not stock. Um, despite popular belief. Despite, despite what you may see advertised. Had to add one because there's no way that you're going to get uh, enough airflow. Besides that though, um, those have been my main complaints. The, the overall looks good, no issues. Um, I mean, with looks, but I definitely would say that there are some really big deal breakers if you want to side mount a big graphics card, uh, anything bigger than a stock, I guess in width, uh, and also with rather big fans and such. I, I am a little disappointed with no ability to control the RGBs, especially if you had something in your case, like, you know, you had your motherboard all synced up and stuff. I believe that is, of course, something to do with the shipping issue there, but it is kind of difficult to see. So as I said, if all that stuff that I mentioned that is shipping related, I'll, of course, put down in the description of how that gets resolved and stuff. I'm sure, like, you know, you'll be able to control the RGBs, and I'm sure we'll have some standoffs and things like that, maybe even some mounting brackets and stuff uh, for SSDs that will be, of course, down in uh, the comments, I'll include that there. But overall, this has a couple major concerns if someone's really interested in getting full functionality out of this. And of course, it also has its fair bit of advantages. It looks cool and it has a side mounted graphics card, which I was really excited about, but couldn't even use it. So thank you guys very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.